Hello folks, uh, Sean Mice here, and in this video I'm going to talk with you candidly about keyword research. One of the things that we see in internet marketing is a, a lot of generic information about doing keyword research, and it usually focuses on quantity, not quality. It usually focuses on, you know, hey, how can we find the software that's going to give us 10,000 permutations of keywords that people just might type in in your niche. The truth of the matter is, people aren't typing in, in general, people are not typing in just some keyword permutation um, if they're really looking to buy something. You see, you can, you can work on all these keyword permutations and you can capture every single click that's coming in in your niche in most cases probably 90 or 95 percent of all those clicks are just curiosity seekers and, and the thing is if, if you're looking to just plain old drive traffic to your website you want to run up the traffic counters that's one thing but I'm a real big believer in the fact that I only want to drive people to my website if they're really interested and not only are they really interested but they're likely to be a buyer I, I, I really want to filter the people that come to my website for buyers. The question is, somebody comes to your website and they're a buyer and they come to it through an organic means, so through a search engine, how, what kind of keywords do they use? Let, let's think about, let's just think about a sports niche. Okay, maybe, maybe volleyball. Is somebody that's a buyer just typing in volleyball? Are they typing in something deeper? You see, what does it take for somebody to be a buyer? Well, generally, a buyer is somebody that has a problem, and they buy to solve that problem. Generally, buyers don't buy just because they were interested in something, and they went and did some searches, and they found a sales page, and the sales page talked them into buying. That usually doesn't happen. Usually, if somebody buys something, it's because they're looking for a solution. So if somebody's involved in volleyball and they're looking for a solution, what type of question, what, what type of keyword would, would they put in? In fact, I just gave it away when I said what type of question. People are going to ask questions. Think about what you do when you're looking for information online. When you're looking for generic information, like traffic generation, maybe that's what you type in, traffic generation. And then maybe you dig a little bit deeper and you type in Facebook marketing or you type in article marketing and you, you're reading some articles. You're learning, but you're not ready to buy. But then maybe you see some things about article marketing or Facebook marketing and then you begin to get some questions. Well, how do I do such and such? And you start typing those questions into your search bar. You just might be getting close to being a buyer. Because you've identified what your problem is and you're trying to solve it. And it's the same way online. The person, in fact, let's just do a search. Let's just use volleyball. Let's just use volleyball as an example. If somebody types in volleyball, what are they going to get? They're going to get all these volleyball sites. And if you're teaching people how to really play volleyball, no, two things. Number one, you have a really hard time, really hard time ranking on this page. But number two, probably the people that are looking at this page are looking for the types of results that are on this page. That's why they're optimized for this page. They're looking for information about volleyball. Okay, but what if you were to go a little deeper and, and type in, how do I play volleyball? Now we're beginning to get a little bit closer. We're not there yet, but we're getting closer. So now we have volleyball camps. We have the WikiHow. We have a YouTube video, which is nice. Okay, now we're getting the volleyball.about.com. That's more just information. What if we were to type in instead, how do I spike a ball in volleyball? What's going to happen? Uh, now, we're, now we're digging deeper. We're seeing YouTube videos. We're seeing another uh, uh, wiki how. Okay? We're seeing some more information. We're 
we're getting closer. We're seeing the strength and power for volleyball.com site, basics to volleyball attacking, how to strike a volleyball correctly. Okay, now we can start doing this research and we can say, wow, what can we learn here? We could say, what, what could we learn that we could use in as a keyword? You could say, how about, and I had just seen something and so I won't have it, but what about your wrist action? Your wrist motion is important. How about if we said, how do I control my wrist? In volleyball okay wow now notice how tight we're getting we're getting into Yahoo answers with Austin volleyball that's an looks like an article but these right here these are skill based these are skill based what are these folks doing they are selling they're likely without clicking through them all they are pro likely selling some volleyball spike approach okay. see the same thing in hub pages in fact, I think that something that's very interesting for you to notice is that this website is showing up three times in Google with different articles. I assume those are different articles without uh, going through. Now we have the Volleyball Magazine. Notice how the more we dig in, the closer we're getting to the buyer. And, and so if I were in the volleyball niche, I, I wouldn't want to optimize for the word volleyball. I would want to optimize for how do I control my wrist in volleyball. How about how do I control my wrist when I spike a volleyball? Okay, now, look at this. I love these results. They're so targeted. They're, they're so targeted. And they give you ideas. Now you could, you could maybe optimize for how to improve your volleyball wrist snap. Or how do you improve your volleyball wrist snap? How can I spike a volleyball harder? How can I get the ball over the net? How can I do a better wrist snap? Here's the thing. If we optimize for this, what do we, what do we see here? Number one, I mean, my goodness, if answers.yahoo is coming up first, you can optimize for this. You could be number one in Google just using normal techniques that I've taught you in the past or that others have taught you, just normal optimization techniques. What do we also know about Google AdWords here? Nobody's advertising. So if you were to advertise for this keyword, how much could you get? I don't know what the minimum bid is in keywords in, in AdWords these days, but what, what could you get the number one ranking for if you were to buy clicks? A dime? 20 cents? And not only would you be getting them for whatever the lowest bid is, you wouldn't be getting a lot of clicks on them. When you got clicks, they should be buyers. Why? Because people don't ask these kinds of questions generally unless they're getting close to that buying stage, assuming that you're in a niche where there's money, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the next question might come up. Well, how do I come up with questions? Well, first of all, one way to do it is to do what we I just did. I just demonstrated. I started out with something general. I went to something more deep. And on a deep place like this, I could probably come up with 15 article titles right here just looking at this page. So where do I place the ball in my hand to spike a volleyball? Where, is it, oh, how do you spike better in volleyball? How do you serve with your wrist instead of your hand? How do you quickly insert, improve spiking? How do you use your elbow to wrist arm action? How do you have more ball control in volleyball? How do you gain more control in volleyball spiking? How do you do volleyball reciprocal? That's probably a reciprocal link, so that's probably not volleyball. How do you snap your wrist downward in volleyball? How do you impart top spin to your volleyball? Look, folks, you may only get three clicks a month to that keyword, but one out of three clicks might buy from you. And after 24 months, you've gotten 72 clicks and 24 buyers. Is it worth writing an article for that? I think so. I'll tell you, one of the secrets... In, that I use in article marketing. I don't talk about this much because people, <laughs> I don't think to teach on this because people are always looking for volume, volume, volume. You know, if I have an article out there that gets six visits, 
you know, people go, well, why, why would you write an article that only gets six clicks? Well, if two of them buy and they invest $600, well, it's worth writing a $7 article for a $600 investment. A lot of my, my most profitable articles are tightly niched articles just like this. So you say, okay, where do I come up with these questions? Hey, here's a great place, answers.yahoo. So let's just stick to this topic, which is volleyball. And, and obviously you could do this by just going to the directory as well. And you could browse a category and you could go to the sports and you can go to volleyball and these are some of the questions how do you transition from indoor to beach volleyball why does my wrist hurt when I play volleyball what is the most common pass in volleyball now this is probably not a buyer question why it's not targeted enough how do you serve a ball that grazes the net? How do you serve a ball that lands on the defensive side? How do you prevent finger strains in volleyball? Should you play volleyball or cheerlead? I mean, that's probably a teenager, and that's probably not what we're looking for. And again, this may be a teenager asking this question, but people that are buyers might also ask that question. How do you do a 5 and one volleyball rotation? How do you play beach volleyball? How are you able to spike? Now, we can take this to a deeper level. And obviously, we could continue. We could go, this is newest. We could go with most popular. I mean, come on, how many have I just given you? 15 or 20 questions? You can keep looking at questions until you find all the questions that you need answers to. Another thing that you can do is you can start with one of these questions in Google. So if we go to Google, and we type into the Google search box, how do I spike the volleyball? Or how do I spike the ball in volleyball? We're going to see four different questions here. How do you spike the ball in volleyball? How do you spike the ball harder? How do you spike the ball hard? And you can continue to do this. So you could say, how do I... How do I avoid a wrist sprain in volleyball? Okay, so we're, we're, we're not seeing anything deeper. But let's just click there. Go. Okay, how about how to strengthen wrists? How to avoid volleyball injuries? So that just gives us a couple of, of ideas right there. But the whole idea here is, folks, that you're going to dig deep, and, and answers.yahoo is just a great place to do that. You're going to dig deep into the question that you're working with, and questions are key. Focus on the problems in your niche. What are the problems? So we're just talking about volleyball. Wrist sprains are a problem. Okay, Wrist action is an issue. Um, spiking the ball is an issue, and, and I don't play volleyball, so I, I just spiking I, I saw that as I was doing a search to prepare for this there's many other things you would do with the ball in volleyball you could write articles on all of those types of things the, the key here is that you want to focus on the how how do I do this how do you do this how means that someone wants to learn how to do something and people buy based on a need or a desire to learn how to do something